Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador Mont, and uh, to the priest, to the uh, prestigious guests and uh, members of uh, this uh, prestigious foundation group. Thank you and good morning. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Bernadette, for facilitating this uh, topic. And uh, I'm sure you will be more excited when I uh, when I finish my uh, task. My task this morning is, uh, or my objective this morning is uh, to share a very vital, very fundamental uh, knowledge you know, that we cannot see. Uh, can you put your mic closer? Yeah. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Thank you. And uh, my my topic uh, title is very comprehensive because it touches a lot of the four general objectives uh, touched by Dr. Dark. Productivity, profitability, competitiveness, and sustainability, and resilience in climatic uh, uncertainties. Thank you, uh, Sir Mon, for elucidating uh, the proper definition of the quantum, the nanotechnology, I suppose. Uh, and uh, I think uh, quantum draws in the nearest future, and I believe, and I hope, God permits, uh, this will be in the a growth mindset in every uh, corners of the agriculture in our country because what we lack now is regenerative agriculture, not yet sustainability. I think we have to start regenerating our land, our dysfunctional soils. Now, uh, rethinking in Philippine agriculture is a key word by uh, Secretary Mark. And I, I, I suppose this is a term that we must all uh, carry within our hearts, especially our new farmers, uh, because that are the days that we have to change our mindsets. We need to change because it's overtaking us already. We are not progressing as we would like it to, because we are now in the uh, age of technology. We are presenting a quantum growth. That will be uh, for my uh, partners in the U.S. They uh, call it the word quantum. It's a uh, leap, fast forward growth because we be a growth mindset uh, from the previous uh, conventional ways. We have a new way to grow. That's just the conventional uh, ways. Now, in my presentation outline, uh, I'll be tackling on uh, basic introduction, the quantum growth breakthrough, a few at the end, uh, at the end part. Okay. Now, uh, I am attaching uh, a, a vision of Dr. Yard, a new vision for a modern and industrialized building agriculture because we have to one of. I think we have to be with uh, uh, him in his endeavor to change the way we uh, agriculture, the way we uh, practice our agriculture. And uh, in his uh, in his uh, in his uh, uh, vision of uh, inclusive Philippine agri-industrialization, he mentioned the four pillars, the four sustainable development goals, and the four major objectives. And uh, I think you have seen this a lot of times already in the internet. Yes, the four major objectives uh, to give us uh, a clearer uh, understanding of uh, the, 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 the objective for productivity. It's an increased productivity through conventional and high end science innovations. Profitability, an increased net returns by less cost per unit area of production. Competitiveness, quality assurance of products, and sustainability, continuous and stable capacity of agricultural activities. Okay, soil degradation. Uh, once uh, uh, the former president of uh, the U.S., uh, uh, ex-president uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt in the 1940s, did his notable speech among uh, 
U.S. farmers, he called them as a nation, no, no, uh, a nation that uh, a nation that destroys, uh, no, no, a nation that 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 destroys its soil, destroys itself. I think that's a uh, a uh, big interpretation of what is happening now globally, soil degradation, and. Uh, in the first year of uh, the papacy of Saint, uh, no, Saint of our uh, holiness, uh, Pope Francis, Pope Francis, in his uh, exhortation of the Lord to see on caring for, mm. on caring for an environment, new home, he is exhorting, exhorting to all the peoples of the world, you know, whether Catholics or non-Catholics, to have a new conversion on how we will appreciate uh, his creation towards, uh, towards this gift, you know, this divine gift that was entrusted to us. Now, uh, I hope we will be in one with our holiness to always think of conversion. The eco-agrological, uh, eco-agrological, eco-agrological uh, distortion the inequalities in proportions brought about by environmental crisis in our landscape. Okay? As you can see, uh, uh, we are part of the most degraded soil in the global NASA. Okay? You can see the map of the Philippines, it's pure red also. Okay? And if you also uh, have a closer look, almost 50% of global croplands are already degraded degraded like that. <laughs> so we are already transforming our earth into a non-agricultural non landscape. Okay, uh, this presentation was, uh, was present, this uh, uh, diagram was presented in Rome a year ago uh, in one of uh, the, the world scientists that uh, uh, a transformation from the prairie lands to the most uh, uh, degraded soils. So there was a healthy soil before, and MDP decrease, which is a net, net plant productivity decrease, soil organic carbon decrease, soil moisture decrease. So this is uh, a climatic change factors, aridity increases, temperature warming, evapotransformation increase, and a dry land conversion. Okay, a, a famous farmer in the uh, report times, uh, economist, once said, in order for a farmer to understand uh, profits, he must go back to the meaning of the soil. And uh, according to uh, the father of soil science, Hans Jenny, Hans Jenny described soil and he defined soil as a, a, a uh, uh, in, in four parts, it is it's three parts. It's either clay, sand, and silt. That's it. Sand, silt, clay. Okay. And to give to give us a more deeper understanding of the soil definition, it is the source of all food and fiber consumed here. And it is a region composed of minerals, organic matter, water, air, and living microbes. It provides us infrastructure to support and nurture plants. And by this definition, we know that the soil is a living uh, world. It's just not a dirt. It's a living world. The soil that, un that uh, is underneath our feet is a living world. World that we cannot see. Now, the basic soil building blocks is what we call the soil food web or the soil biology. This diagram was, uh, was uh, given to us by the famous scientist from, from the US, uh, Dr. Elaine Hinman, where in, uh, he described the chain of events, the soil uh, nutrient cycling you know, on goings before, uh, above, and below the, 
above and below the ground. As you can see, bottom line at the bottom of the presentation, we have four distinct tropic levels. The first tropic levels consisting of the photosynthesizers and decomposers and other predators and the fourth tropic level to a higher level. And the final uh, predator is us, humans. Okay, the first two tropic levels is the main focus of my presentation because it is so important that without this first and second tropic level, everything collapses. We will not proceed, we will not live without the first two tropic level. Why? Because it starts from plants. Anything that would start from plants and photosynthesis coming from the sunlight, you know, and us being a uh, recipient of all these nutrients, but brought about by the sequence of nutrient cycling, it will collapse. Okay. Okay, uh, to mention uh, some of the major benefits of a healthy soil food web or the soil biology what we call them, the microbes. They are involved in nutrient cycling, nutrient retention. They are involved in soil structure, in water infiltration, soil water holding capacity, disease suppression. They are involved in degrading pollutants and they are also involved in biodiversity. Okay. As a matter of fact, one teaspoon of soil consists more or less a billion to five billion, depending on the on the source of the soil. Can you imagine a billion bacteria in a teaspoon of soil? Imagine that one billion and several yards of fungi, protozoa, nematodes, arthropods, and earthworms. Without these uh, microbes, microorganisms, our systems, the ecosystems, is not viable. It's not functional. We need all this. Okay. What is bacteria? Everything knows about bacteria. It's our one cell organisms, and they are present in all living things, in us, in our body. Bacteria, we are all embedded in bacteria. What we have in our gut are all bacteria. Without this gut microbiome, not, we will not live. So can you imagine the impact of gut microbiome? The science of gut microbiome is so powerful. Now they're using gut microbiome to treat diseases because anything that can diversify the gut in terms of a microbiome will easily uh, confer immunity or disease uh, prevention from human factors, from human illnesses. Imagine that. It's still microbes that works. Bacteria. So what I what you have seen in the diagram is a social is a soil lifestyle, you know, as a, and it's a complex and diverse mix of species and represents the greatest concentration of all biomasses anywhere in the planet. We have everywhere this microbes depending on the landscapes. Okay. Our good uh, secretary, Dr. Dark, in his uh, speech at the third Zealand meeting in, uh, at the Bureau of Soils Water Management uh, only uh, a month ago, September 23rd, this is his main gist of the, of the title of his speech. Bringing back soil health. It is a must. Being an agriculturist, an expert, and soil science and fungi, everything but. So he and I, he, he understood well why we have to regenerate our soil, our soil, our dysfunctional soil. And what therefore is soil health to us? Soil health is the continued capacity of the soil to function as a vital living ecosystem that sustains us, primarily us, that sustains our plants, our animals. Why? Because we should be building resiliencies in all aspects of resilience, resistance, and overall productivity. 
or profitability. So the importance of soil biology for soil health no, is multi. There are multi functions attributed to a proper soil biology. From aggregate formation, that's the bigger structure, the particles, the macro, macro, macro forms, from micro to macro forms, from the broad about bacteria. Yeah, water flow, water storage, water filtration, decomposition of residues, uh, influence on atmospheric composition and toxification of pathogens or pollutants in the soil, and pathogen suppression, plant protection, nitrogen fixation, carbon fixation, nutrient cycling, and phosphorus fixation or phosphorus solubilization of area. So, sorry for uh, tactics or mentioning a little bit of science here because we have to go back to the basics, okay? And, uh, we have to know something uh, beyond what is the quantum growth first, okay? So, to give us a bigger, a, a good perspective on soil principles, our scientists now are rethinking our, our, uh, our information that we should minimize soil disturbance. We should energize with diversity. We have to keep the soil over, and we have to maximize living roots. These are the uh, four basic principles in soil health. We have to understand that uh, in all these factors, we can go back to the natural parameters that we have lost in our landscape. And therefore, soil fertility, what is soil fertility? It is the status of the soil with respect to its ability to supply elements. Okay? And uh, from the total whole soil perspective, soil fertility is not just providing plants with nutrients, or, but nurturing the whole soil ecosystem to achieve multiple functions or multiple goals. So therefore, uh, functionality in soil fertility would be healthier plants, healthier microbe systems or ecosystems, resilient ecosystems and environmental protection. Okay, uh, to give you a glimpse of uh, the impacts of nitrogen, okay, I'm now devoting my uh, topic on nitrogen, particularly the inorg inorganic nitrogen. In, in the U.S., as, an, as a result of uh, nitrogen fertilization in their soils. In the U.S., soil pH in Washington has fallen from 8 to 4 in some calcareous soils. Imagine that, Washington. In China, they have already uh, reached a soil acidification from overuse of nitrogen fertilizers. Imagine their government now is, is as already, you know, as already uh, have a, public, uh, uh, a policy that starting next year they will be reducing by 50% of their nitrogen consumption. Imagine China. <laughs> they are number one polluters also. <laughs> Sorry to uh, So 50% how I wish our country uh, will undergo this transformation. Reduction in needs for eliminate uh, pollutants in our rivers, in our soils and waters. In New Zealand, sir, in New Zealand, uh, milk had been rejected by China, China due to excessive nitric levels. And I, and I understand New Zealand, also law and environmental country, it has also their negatives on environmental uh, uh, issues. Their rivers are no longer weedable. They are no longer small. Then they are now also releasing a national policy that by year 2030, I think, they have uh, the ambition that all the rivers must be swimmable and weightable. Weightable. Globally, globally, the impact of uh, nitrogen fertilization is $100 billion. Start very normal. Between 60 billion and 90 billion dollars going 
goes into the air or pollutes water. And the uptake of inorganic nitrogen applied to crops is generally intensive of 40% due to substantial losses caused by denitrification, volatilization, leaching, and surface runoff. Okay. Sibang Tasio has been very uh, uh, gloomy, really, because uh, for the past 50 years or so, uh, a Filipino farmer goes this, uh, no, goes this uh, uh, cycle. So his soil has been degraded. There are, there, are, there are lots of pollution. The diversity is affected. Dysfunctional soils. Trace element deficiencies in plants. Expensive because every year, 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 every year is also always fertilized, fertil fertilizer. And in effect, it's all inefficient. It's not profitable anymore. They have to, they have to increase, 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 increase until such time that they take many more results. So on farm cost, overuse of inorganic nitrogen limits plant uptake of minerals and trace elements. This is the main reason why, why we have lots of illnesses. We no longer have the capacity to absorb the trace minerals and micro minerals that, that are attributed to preventing uh, uh, diseases in human. Okay? So there is an increasing plant susceptibility to pests and weeds and diseases. And a wide, a wide exposure of insecticides and fungicides all over our country already. Okay, this is due to commercial, commercialism, consumerism. So there are, the farmers' profits have been reduced drastically, and by adding unnecessary chemicals to the food chain. My God, we, our food now is is uh, laced with uh, lots of chemicals. So uh, nitrogen cycle, we should have, we should be. Uh, uh, we should be uh, taking into mind that uh, the nitrogen cycle thought about by photosynthesis must, must be occurring. occurring. It's not a partial photosynthesis, but it should be going back again, not to the plants, not to the atmosphere. We have 70% atmospheric nitrogen. The problem is the plant cannot absorb it. No, only by the plant cannot absorb it if quantum growth. <laughs> so they put it to go out. If quantum growth is not there, because we need microbes to uh, to uh, to fix the nitrogen, as well as the carbon during the process of photosynthesis. My plant. Okay. So the many transformations from uh, atmospheric nitrogen, no. Uh, uh, fixation, mineralization, nitrification, and up to the uptake by plants should occur in a cycle. What about the carbon cycle? Carbon cycle is so important that uh, it is the driver, it is the food that drives the system. Without carbon, suborganic carbon, no, there is no life on Earth. There is no life. We will not eat without carbon because it is the main charge, or it is the main battery of our soils. We need to have soil organic carbon in our agriculture. Why bond carbon? Or why bond on soil carbon? Because the multiple functions that are attributed to soil carbon presence must always be intact. Can you imagine uh, all these uh, functionalities one carbon, in one in carbon is so important to generate our agriculture. And what is there for in the hierarchy of life? Is it soil? No, it is photosynthesis. No? That soil that forms the basis of the pyramid of life. No? We used to think soil as the basis of the pyramid of life. We've been thinking a lot on Put, uh, having our soil chemistry, sir, and uh, having a uh, tested for the whatever. No, 
it is now photosynthesis that is all critical. It is photosynthesis is making light from light. Photo means light. Synthesis is putting together. So photosynthesis is putting light, making light from light. Because plants require energy for all living organisms. Okay. This is the basic uh, transformation of a photosynthetic one. The energy or light energy coming from the sun, how much percent is available up to the time it is uh, it is uh, used up by the plant for energy utilization is just one to three percent. One to three percent. Because uh, in this diagram, they measure, they measure the chlorophyll, no, the, the absorbance of uh, light by the chlorophyll in the plant's tissues. And uh, with the use of growth, in quantum growth, they were able to magnify or extend the spectrum of absorbance by the plant. So energy was enhanced. The photosynthetic capacity the photosynthetic rate that was absorbed by the plants is greater. It's 10 times greater than, than the normal way of absorption. absorption. I'm mentioning bacterial photosynthesis because later in this technology I'll be mentioning uh, bacterial uh, uh, photosynthesizers. Okay. I will now go to uh, the technology problem. As you can see, uh, this is small bottle. This is a technology or a culture in a bottle. This is a 30 years culture fermentation technology that was uh, invented, developed by ecological laboratories from the USA. Their offices are based in uh, Florida. They are into not only in agriculture, but they are also into bioremediation. The microbes, the microbes that we are also promoting in the right like now, uh, in environmental, uh, in, in all our environmental issues like pollution, pollution, pollution in waters, and uh, we have lots of clients now who are heavily uh, using our products, specifically manufacturing products that that uh, that produces lots of. Uh, uh, BOD, COD, PSS, everything. Our DNA is so strict right now. And almost all, almost all, but some, the DAOA uh, standards, man, I think about DAOA. Because, because, Matasam, uh, Matasam phosphorus, phosphorus, Matasam nitrates. Where does this come from? From our, from our food, inorganic. Matter, organic matter, that were not decomposed. Okay. So, this is the actual uh, the bottles or the uh, container. We are dispensing our technology in a gallon or in a liter size. We have the bigger size, but that's only good for the high commercialized uh, scales. Okay. Uh, this technology uh, covers the requirements from top to bottom by the by the technology by the plant uh, involving uh, minerals, nutrients, and bacteria, specifically photosynthetic bacteria in the soil, the nitrogen, and the carbon. So, what is quantum light? Therefore, light, as mentioned, quantum growth light, which means. The basic core uh, technology of this is photosynthetic organisms, which are mainly involved in an absorption of uh, light, sunlight, the energy, because that is the basic requirement. Uh, this is the light uh, protocol by the carbon cycle. We need to absorb more light coming from the sun. We need to have more photosynthetic over the absorption by our plants from the leaves, but we need to have a photosynthetic rate that is higher than normal. So they combine now plant photosynthetic rates and bacterial photosynthetic. So this culture, not this one uh, variant, would be heavily involved in the absorbance of 
nitrogen. Nitrogen. Yeah. Now, so uh, more nitrogen, we can now have, we can now uh, uh, use more nitrogen naturally other than using inorganic forms, which are, which are pollutants. So, so light because it's coming from the photosynthetic light organisms in this culture. These are just uh, a handful of uh, diverse microbes. Kung sa ano, there is a forum. There is a uh, microbial forum because uh, they perform lots of uh, inverted functions. They perform lots of mechanisms in this uh, in this uh, in this culture. Uh, there are there are uh, around 32, 32 uh, organisms in here uh, combined together, but there are more. There are more. So uh, these are the inverted functions from fertilization, fertilizer requirement, pathogen resistance, plant growth promoting hormones. They are involved in stress reductions. Every everything that is. Uh, uh, required by plants, increasing nutrient availability. Okay, the next the next part, BSC is practically uh, a combination of spore forming bacteria as well as the humic acid component. So it is a uh, it is a uh, technology that uh, uh, that uh, solve soil problems, especially soil compaction. Soil compaction because when we have a compacted soil, we no longer have an aerated soil. So we need to increase the pores, the porosity. We need to increase the water volume capacity. We need to increase the soil structure. Everything, the aggregation, from micro aggregation to macro aggregation, having a uh, a uh, and, and a healthy diverse uh, root root zone. So it is a combination of different cultures or technology. So this is the humic material uh, analysis. Uh, as we know, humic acid is the most uh, fertile component of the organic matter, having 60% carbon, around 80% uh, uh, nitrogen, yeah, 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 and some uh, sulfur and phosphorus, and other micronutrients. So ESC. So both these containers are basically soil and plant amendments. Our fertilizer and pesticide authority has given us uh, 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 definition of our products as biofertilizer. They are biofertilizers because they are biological amendment as well as a fertilizer. It's a misnomer, but they are still consider in the in our in our registration as bio fertilizer. Okay? So, so how would I describe the pictures of these products? They are very really safe, they are non-toxic, they are easy to use, they are biodegradable and and they are non-pathogenic. They will not infer any, any form of disease. They do not contain inhibitors, they do not contain chemicals, they do not contain compost, they are not GMOs, they are not the amino acids or hormones. Why we are different from the rest in the market? Uh, you have seen a lot of uh, indigenous microbes in the market. It's a concoction of so of many products, but the uh, composting products, the Manufacture lots of uh, inorganic uh, organic fertilizer. We are different because we know our cultures. We know what will happen when it's used the environment. So they are consortiums. We know the species. We know we know their functions, and the totality is a multiple function. Why we are also different because they can live not in three years and more. They have a shelf life that are longer lasting. They have uh, done underground multi stage fermentation technology. Of course, empirical evidence will show that all these products have undergone thousands of 
field studies, paid studies, testimonials, and uh, so on. Or, or. Philippines is just a bully uh, map. Uh, uh, it's just three years ago when we uh, launched this part in the building. Benefits, blah, blah, blah. Okay, why is quantum growth? Um, I thank you for uh, the comment. So if you use quantum growth for an average rice farmer, for example, no? this is the average performance. No? Using the yield, no, using quantum growth, not using quantum growth on this side, will, will increase biodiversity of the indigenous microbes. We can now reduce quant we can now reduce fertilizer components. No? We can use by half. 50% or even better. The weaning of fertilizers is more or less more on the first year, on the second year, on the third year. It depends on the concept of the farm. But we can totally eliminate fertilizers in our soil. We can totally eliminate. In fact, even before World War II, the second, well, I know fertilizers happened. Only it started during the Industrial Revolution. So what makes our product different? It's they are functionally diversified. The fermentation process is a lot different from the from the rest of the market. We have selective adaptation and they are versatile. We have faster genetics. They have a greater rate. In the, uh, only uh, a lot of environments they are applicable anywhere. What type of environment? Even from extreme temperatures, they can survive. They can survive from the you know, 5 degrees centigrade to a high of uh, 55 degrees centigrade. Can you imagine uh, they are highly uh, resistant? Okay. Why I am showing to you the rice industry roadmap 2030? Uh, because I want you to know that uh, they set standards, uh, the DA has set standards for the guides for the year 2020 up to 10 years, because uh, uh, in, in our three-year in our three-year case studies, uh, we focus on the rice. We think that our value as a company we have to support our farmers, and we have started you know, uh, 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 having technical demo that would uh, support our claims. So what we had. What we had, we had uh, 19 farmers that we were able to support. We, had, we were able to explain to them that uh, there is no harm in shifting or in reducing. So they, they got the, the product going. And now later, I will show to you what happened. So the purpose, the main purpose to us is shared information that are usable and that are applicable to our uh, poor farmers. We are here to help the big companies, but also not only the big companies, but especially the poorest of the poor sectors, which are our poor farmers. Because I have a heart, because I'm a rice farmer too. Okay? Okay, uh, this is the rice security Philippines. They, uh, they divided their faces into uh, three parts from 2019 to 2030. Their objectives. Okay, where we are now, so uh, we all know that uh, an average province in the region would run uh, on the average of four parts per hectare. And, uh, and uh, 29 provinces have been adopted. More than four tons, 39 provinces have uh, exceeded 3 to 3.9 tons per hectare. 14 provinces have less than a ton, less than 3 tons per hectare. Where are we now? Okay. We have different uh, variations. Okay. What is the goal? The goal of our government is to increase average yield to 6 tons per hectare in high yield provinces and 5 tons per hectare in medium yield provinces and reduce average production plus to 8 pesos per kilo in low cost provinces and 10 pesos per kilo in medium cost provinces. Okay. 
what we want to achieve. Of course, we would like to be competitive and increase our incomes. And we want to achieve an enhanced resiliency to disasters and climate risks. I think the only certain in our the only certainty that that we have to expect in our agriculture now is uncertain climate. Climate. Uncertainty in climate. That's a fact. Now, comparatively speaking, uh, to give us a, a view of our uh, neighboring uh, nations, uh, this is our impact production cost, more or less 12 pesos and 41 centavos. Thailand is at 8.85 and uh, Vietnam at 6.53. Okay. Now, we have segregated our uh, Philippine SA we have segregated yielding provinces and from the most high yielding and to the lowest yielding. Now we have categorized them into low cost, into medium cost, and okay, okay. Okay. so these are the categorization. Provinces that yielded more four tons, less than three to four tons, or between three to four tons. Okay. Right, good. Now we have a picture. Uh, or uh, as, a, as a tool, okay? Uh, just to show you what a poor farmer is doing, it's a, it's a bouquet, no? Okay, if you imagine uh, from day one up to uh, day of harvest, there are lots, lots of activities going on going in his farm. Beginning from seed, seed sowing, Land preparation, before land preparation, during land preparation, two days before transplanting, a day before transplanting, during transplanting, one week after planting, ten days after planting, activities after planting. Wow, it will take him 100, 120 days. Depending on your son, it's a fertility or a maturity stage of the harvest. So, I'm bringing this out to you, yeah, to give you a glimpse right, on how much fertilizers and insecticides or weedicides or fungicides that are poured on our soils. But this this has an impact to a bigger community. It's not just Pampanga. The whole of Central Luzon is this planet. It will transfer to everywhere about, right? That's why we have lots of pollution. Our nutrients are already, uh, this pumps uh, are already in about. So imagine our drinking water is no longer potable. In, this, in the US, their waters are not potable. They spend lots of billions of dollars just to, uh, to, to purify their water. Okay, I just want to show to you no? the 30 days after after uh, planting. Oh, no, no, yeah, within 30 days after planting the where, where is it? The, yeah, the herbicide. There are no there are chemical application. We started from uh, one week after planting. Herbicide application. This is detrimental. Fungi. Fertilizer application. This is detrimental. Insecticide application. Fungicide application. Fertilizer application. Another another insecticide. Fungicide application. One, two, three, four, five. Imagine five instances. No, pouring into our lands. Every year, madami. And it's increasing ba? Unabatedly, my God. What? Nakakatakot na po talaga. Okay? What are we doing now? I think we have to do something about this ba? Are we going to to grow our children's children uh, growing with empty vessels ba? Plants that are not nutritionally uh, dense, without calories. We are very sick now. 
English method is already not functioning ba? It's not, it's no longer filtering. Wala nang nanotechnology na yan. Wala na. The, the, the very basic of uh, immune system, we have lots of, uh, in the US, the rates of, ano, of autoimmune diseases is sorely high, but high. These are not infectious, but they are food related. It, it happens in the first, in the first world countries. How much more is that? You too much. So I think we have to know something about it. But thank you for, for this. Uh, uh, okay. How do we apply our quantum question? It's very simple, very applicable, very convenient. You don't need any a fifty kilo na pinapasan. Hmm? My God, labor is expensive enough from three hundred fifty to four hundred pesos a day, depending on the per hectare basis. How many times the buyer will partner another? Do we want to reduce our cost? Our cost? So, what? Malalang mapiga ang partner. Alam talagang tulungan natin sila on how they can see things away from the traditional way. It's, this is a new way of growing. Growing the natural way. We just have to let nature work for the apartments. We need to we need to educate them. What we need now is education for our apartments. So I will touch on this enough and it's a way. It's all it's all under for sure. It's very simple. Two gallons for a hectare. That's it. You can either choose it uh, on the soaking stage in the city, in the city, in the city, or a day before planting. That's it. Apply an upsub sprayer. Those two gallons. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. What, what, what's your big thing? This one, sir. What, what? You, you use the hectare? Yes, sir. Two gallons. Two gallons. One yes. of each. Yes. Okay. yes, 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 yes. Combination. I would say uh, multi diverse functions. Okay. I, as I told you, uh, we are we, we very love with rice farming, so I have to give you what happened you know, on, our, on, our, on our candidates. So we had 19, uh, 19 practicing farmers with irrigations, without irrigations, different types of seed varieties. We had types of seasons, but they are a microcosm or they, are, uh, they represented uh, the nationwide farmers. So we have a farmer coming from Cagayan, we have a farmer coming from Pampanga, we have a farmer coming from Nebisiya, we have a farmer coming from Agusan del Norte, a Caraga region, we have a farmer coming from Zamboanga del Sur. Okay? Okay. So as you can see, uh, we plotted a uh, yield per hectare. The actual, actual, before and after, based on their uh, yield, uh, uh, yield before, okay? There are, there are farmers yielding 6.9, 5.6, 5, 5, 5, more or less, maybe you can see 5, 5, and then 49, 4.9, 6.1, 3.3, 3.5 in the Caracas, and 6.5 in Zamboanga, a high yield province. But after, we have to go back to the after. What is after? From 3.8 to 4.8, from 3.5 to 4.4, from 6.9 to 9.3. This is staggering, my God. Maybe because the plant, they, they, they're, they're, they're farms. Fertile already. 5.6 to 9.9. .9. This is a, a amazing, a, a amazing failure. From 5, what's this? 10.5 to 7.9 to 9, 5.7 to 6.3. And then after 5.6, 7.9, 5.4, 6.1, 4.2, 4, 7.7. Differences, differences in increase or decrease, it's all positive. Yung mga nakalit po yun because there was flooding. That's why hindi namin sinama sa actual uh, statistical statistic populations. That's how the regime averaging on 40% of these? The uh, averaging. Uh, uh, averaging? Averaging, okay. 
It's about that. It's 42. 42. Yeah, sharp mind, sir. <laughs> 42 percent. This is what they know. Huh? In the point that they know, huh? <laughs> this is an actual manifestation of of farmers who are just willing to share their their mindset, but their thinking, but it's just a, a way of influencing them. This is it. This is it. Okay. We also plot in their production cost. But we have a production cost as low as 3 pesos, 17, because we have a thousand and eight games microbes, but and different contractions, but before, before it, in the uh, fertilizing their lands. So they are of the organic type thinkers. Right? And uh, as high as uh, 9.06, 8.79, okay? And as you can see, the last uh, column is uh, they are into dry season, they are into inbred or the hybrid uh, varieties. They are also flooded, but flooded. Okay, in a nutshell, to summarize, you know, if, we are, if, I, if I'm going to use these stats, you know, these are the, our counterparts, and basing my small uh, case study, if I may, you know. Uh, heavy native farmers as a uh, as a uh, sample sample yeah from uh, from uh, from Apari to Zamboanga Kagayan. So imagine this video uh, this video from an average of 4.6 tons, which is our current by standards now around 4 to 4.5, and to yield us around almost two almost two tons per hectare. Where will you go? My God. Sapat hypo kung that. Okay? And then, uh, Sir Mon, 42% uh, is staggering. Imagine that. And production cost per kilo. Because it lowered the production cost because they had a high yielding, high yielding uh, harvest. The only way that we can help reduce poverty is make them productive, make them yield more. It's not, it's not reducing it organic. Mga hormones, yeah. Just uh, put biology. Ito, uh, ang, ang, ano, ang kanilang, ano, ang kanilang sinabi dito, may lang silang, uh, of course, uh, uh, yung, mga, yung mga users na rin po dito, ano rin sila, mitikuloso, mapag-isip din, Scientists with sila, hindi natin dibigay yung production. So they produce fertilizers from a low 13% to a high of 50%. That's how it's enough. went on. Okay. okay, for example, this is only the detail. Okay. Uh, Techno demo farm data is by Mr. Pan, one hectare. Can you see this at all? Can you play this? Yung po mga young farmers natin doon sa kapit. So, it was conducted uh, two years ago in December, uh, like this uh, season, person planting growth. This is Mr. Pana, the uh, chairperson of the uh, San Nicolas Regators Association. So in bread, and you know, first variety that was used by. He is the, he's our apostle now, apostle. And he's our broadcaster, it's me. And uh, seeing the actual and uh, manifestations of product uh, rights, so in this uh, in this technical demo, there was how many minutes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time now? No, no, no. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Able to get his harvest 16 days earlier. Average of the average, the farmer gets an average of 110 to 115 days. But he got 16 days earlier. <coughs> Manifestations of a good uh, microbial in the root system. This is applicable in all plants. <coughs> All crops will have this uh, same manifestation.
What part is that? What is that? This one, sir. Before, before. Yeah, what part is that? Uh, dealers, dealers for Sony, and rice. This is just to show you the number of dealers. Sony, almost uh, one for every uh, grain of uh, seed. Okay? So, we shall buy and harvest 9.9 times. In the report, it's 5.6. Yield increase is 76%. So, another, another 19 days per year. So we see, we see now a uh, trend in the earlier, earlier, earlier harvest of the, of the rice farmer. 19 days is a big factor no? to prevent uh, floods, to prevent uh, sky Okay. Yeah, this was flooded, no? A year ago, oh, yeah, there was no sample of water. This, this farm was flooded, and this farm on the right side is not flooded. We, uh, 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 there was a flood that uh, as high as uh, 12 to 14 feet, I think. Yeah, and when it receded, it's still, uh, it's still, uh, no, it's still standing. <laughs> and they, they were able to get another portents, while the other, Neighboring and our field is already uh, the back. Okay. For that. Yeah. These guys, these ladies are the provincial agriculture, the provincial uh, uh, officer of the farm from Negros, Pacolot. They went to Pompani just to uh, get uh, a validation from Mr. Panan. They look very happy. They look very happy. <laughs> They showed roots that were uploaded uh, some planet here, yeah. The map of New Mission Pana is uh, one of the Mumba. Ito, uh, uh, totally decayed. Uh, totally decayed. Yeah. You know what? This, these guys are the ones that gave us uh, a, uh, a big uh, sugarcane plantation. Just to give uh, them the uh, roof. They went to Pana. Okay. I think uh, uh, for other crops, like corn, we have also conducted uh, corn technical demo trials, and we have good, uh, good you know, results in corn, from 1.6 tons to 1.92 tons per hectare in corn. In vegetables, like lettuce, kangkong, petchai, kangkong, petchai, parayat, maning manila. In other words, it's just a universal application. Yes, yes. No exception. No exception. No exception. All plants that, uh, that uh, receive uh, protocols for the skin disease. Okay. Challenge. It's a growth challenge. I'm going to see you pull up Mr. Pangan. Imagine. 11.6 times you hear Mr. Pangan, 7.9 to 20. Seven plants, or two point three hectares. Yeah. Oh, this is in the BC, huh? Flooded. Okay. Maybe I just leave you the two A portion. I think uh, not too much on details so already. We can exchange uh, some information after a while. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much.